Good evening and welcome to tonight's Hearthstone Half Hour. I'm Hammy of Velcroftcast. Hope you're well back this week. Had my cake day yesterday, so I had a lovely day off and straight back into the streaming. I apologise, we've been a little bit infrequent. We are going to be back to four nights a week as of next week. I'm going to be on tonight and tomorrow streaming for you. So let's jump in without further ado. It is Pick Your Own Arena night. We are picking up Pick Your Own Arena Dash. I hope you can guess it, it's Warrior. There may have been a slight Photoshop fail there. You can see Goromash Hellscream himself, but we are going to jump in. You guys voted warrior warrior it is so let's jump in okay you need to be picking the cards you guys on twitter and um in the chat stream have been picking our hero and then you pick the cards as we go so we have young priestess armor smith and abomination um in we normally do this on tuesday but pick your own arena you guys jump in the chat on twitter as well um so let's get stuck in and see how it goes um Lots and lots of warrior. So you guys need to be picking the cards. What have we got? Well, we'll review the cards as we go. Young Priestess giving a random friendly minion one health at the end of every turn. Very, very nice for the swarming. Armor Smith. Whenever a friendly minion takes damage, gain one armor. Um, a real strong card. And then Abomination uh, in the interests of keeping things moving. Armor Smith gets the nod of the chat. Let us go. Thank you very much, guys. We've got Nightblade. Heroic Strike and slam. Nightblade dealing 3 damage to the hero, 5 mana, relatively solid attack and defense stats, you get that battle cry that can pick things off. Heroic Strike, if I'm going aggro warrior, I can slam into their faces with a heroic strike. Um, if I've got a weapon, that's just making my hero all the more deadly, pretty effective. And then we have Slam, um, dealing 2 damage to winning if it survives draw a card, the chat has gone for Slam. Lovely stuff. So Slam, particularly nice uh, because of the control, uh, but also the card draw finds its way into many a control warrior deck in ranked and laddering so always good we've got the booty bay bodyguard fury war x and of sergeant booty bay bodyguard five mana a very solid mid game tank nothing too bad nothing hugely good but will drop in nicely the fury war x drop for the low mana you can use for control picking off minions attacking the enemy hero in the face and then the abusive sergeant for that one mana uh, really just giving a minion to attack this turn um, so that good in swarming um, what the other guys in the chat are saying. Um, we have a vote for Fury War X. Fury War X is the one. Thank you very much. So a good choice there for a bit of control. We can also be hitting the opposing hero for damage too. Um, so the Fury War X early game control as well. Right, Frost Elemental, Storming Champion and Spellbreaker. Frost Elemental, late game drop, mana, slightly lower attack and health stats but of course you have that battle cry of freezing a character uh, do not underestimate it it can be quite awkward to play against and not quite as much as the um water elemental with the mage but that battle cry of freezing a character can be very handy Stormwind champion late game finisher um your other minions having one one really really buffs up the whole table if you've got a lot of minions down and then the spell breaker the silence very 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 solid um silence is always pretty handy as well so kind of hard in this early game of the draft to sort of go between any of those um, looks like two votes for spellbreaker so to keep it moving I'm gonna grab the spellbreaker um, it is I can see what you're saying in the chat the spellbreaker at this early stage I'm not entirely sure whether it's gonna be useful or not but the silence uh, on balance I think it's pretty solid um, we've got a Grimscale Oracle, Lepanome and an Abusive Sergeant. Uh, the Grimscale Oracle, we're not playing Murlocs at this point in time. The Lepanome, it's a swarm. Everyone's gone for the Sergeant, so Sergeant it is. We have a Fury War Axe, an Inner Rage, and a Frost Elemental. Um, already done the Elemental, Inner Rage, one damage to a minion and two attack. Nice in Warrior decks if we've got things like Frothing Berserkers and similar. Um, or the other troll whose name I can't quite remember, but anything that gets a enrage bonus, you can in a rage for nothing and then buff things up. Um, done the war axe, done the elemental, really. So those are all pretty much covered. We shall see which everyone goes for. Um, people pondering the axe. Um, axe versus in a rage. Axe two, great for control going to keep this moving. I'm going to go with the axe as the predominant vote. If there is a tie in the votes, by the way, we generally go for me actually having some kind of small decision, but if you guys are universal, then the choice is made. So we have Frostwolf Warlord, Dalran Mage, and Reckless Rocketeer. Frostwolf Warlord, nothing much to say about him. Solid as basic card. Got minions down, he suddenly becomes a beast on turn 5. 
Damage Mage, Spell Damage 1, uh, not huge attack because of that Spell Damage 1, Light Mana Drop, can go with some Warrior cards, um, you know, I could be slamming away for more and similar out, and Reckless Rocketeer for charge, um, low health but slams in for a 5. Keep things going, looks like Warlord is your vote. Grabbed on in. We then have Slam, we have a Goo Bashi Berserker, and then another Frostwolf Warlord. So, in terms of keeping all that on moving, um, Slam, Gurubashi, Berserk, and Ward. Slam, we covered nice and solid. Damage to a minion, drawing a card, control setups. The Berserker actually un underestimated your peril for a basic card. Um, that has got so much health whenever it takes damage, and that's whenever it takes damage, it gets another three attack. So, if things are chipping away at it, or if you damage it yourself, you can have a monstrous Gurubashi Berserker. And then the Frostful Forlord again that we've just drafted, but again, dropping a couple of those in the late game could be quite painful. Um, undecided chat on this one. You gotta choose. Are in Jesus. <laughs> slam has been voted. Well, let's get Slam moving. Ooh, just too late, but welcome to those of you who are just drawn. Darren Maid, Acolyte of Pain, and Abusive Sergeant. Um, welcome, it is great to see you in. Okay. Darren Mage, we've already covered spell damage. Not really gonna be massively used in this warrior deck right now, but who knows? Uh, Acolyte of Pain. Take damage draw cards. Nothing really bad to say about that. Handy in lots of different situations. Abusive Sergeant, buffing up. Early game drops, powering up minions, one turn only. So, a bit of swarm ability. And 8 out of 30 cards. Which will you decide? Are we Dalran Maging, Acolyte of Painting, Abusive Sergeanting, while we wait for some chat feedback? Um, Curse of Naxxramas. Interesting cards coming up. Um, very much looking forward to throwing out some videos. Um, obviously, they, Blizzard announced a bunch at PAX East, but they've also been releasing kind of one a week, kind of one two, um, one every two weeks since then. So some really, really nice stuff. Hugely nasty death rattles and things going on. Lots of rebirthing of cards and things like that. So it's going to be interesting to see how those affect the gameplay, as well as the four wings, four different playable adventure mode quests with legendary cards for beating each will be very very good okay we are being a little bit slow on this i'm gonna to have to keep you guys moving if it's gonna be a dalran a acolyte of pain or an abuse sergeant i'm gonna go for the acolyte of pain let's keep it rocky and rolling reason i've gone for the acolyte simple as it will get draw power if you drop it in the early game draw power is good always okay we've now got a roven halt assassin of an argent commander or a mind control tech so the Ravenheart Assassin, late game finish a stealth, throw it down on 7 mana, it's not going to be able to be hit for a turn directly, however do you remember the area of effect attacks will affect it even though it's stealth. The Argent Commander, solid trading card, pardon the pun, but you trade away with it, it charges, it's got a bubble, it will damage something. And then In Arena. You do tend to see more minions being dropped, so when more minions are dropped on the table, um, that four or more minions take control of one at random can actually come in and do some funny things. Um, you can occasionally jump in. There's one vote for the Argent Commander at this point in time, um, so let's have a butchers and see what we're up to. I think we're going to go with Argent Commander. We shall rock on. Okay, what I always do when drafting Arena, at sort of 10 mana, 20 mana, and just before the end of the draft, I just have a look and see how my mana curve is going. And I also have a look and see the distribution of spells and minions, just to see what my deck's shaping up like. So we're 10 cards in, we'll do a quick review. One minion, two minions, three minions, four minions, five minions, six minions, four spells, or four, well, two spells and two weapons. Um, what does the curve look like? It's pretty even, but we've got a bunch of stuff at two. If we're dropping turn one, we can drop this abusive sergeant, or he can go down a later turn when we've got more minions. Two fairy war axes, that's a really solid early game opening. We can be controlling any kind of rush, hitting any kind of situational threats. Slam! Two slams as well, that will also help us control threats very nicely and draw cards in the early game. Armorsmith, 
dropping that early game, trading away will help us stack up some armor. The Acolyte will help us draw cards in a similar fashion. When we look into the late game, Spellbreak will let us tech, remove a tank or similarly nasty minion. The Warlord will help us swarm, and the Argent Commander uh, will help us do some trading. So I'm feeling pretty happy. So far, that deck is pretty balanced. Nice draws, guys. Um, next up, Whirlwind. Um, we've got a Mog Ushan, I always say Mog Shuan, Warden, and the Youthful Brew Master. See if my touch typing works. So, Whirlwind, damage to all minions. It can tee things up for executes if we find any executes. It can bring things within kill range. Interestingly, nice combo in constructed ranked warrior decks as well. Dropping a Whirlwind on top of your Armorsmith Acolyte of Pain. Damaging your own minion to draw a card. If you damage a lot of your own minions, the Armorsmith puts on a lot of armor. Uh, not bad. Situational in a uh, arena deck such as this, but we'll see how it goes. The Mogu Shan Warden, just a big solid early to mid game tank. Unless you can buff his health up a bit, unless you can buff his attack up a bit, he's going to sit there and slow the opponent down for a while. The Youthful Brewmaster, solid core stats uh, for two mana, the three attack and two health is pretty common, but then with a battle cry of returning a friendly minion from the battlefield to your hand, anything that has got uh, something like a battle cry. Um, can replay cards and do you know remove almost damaged cards and lots of different bits and bobs so do you want a whirlwind and mogushan warden or a youthful Baru master guys are going whirlwind whirlwind it is next up rampage dark iron dwarf or an abusive sergeant we've had so many abusive sergeants turning up i'm not going to explain him So, Rampage, damage minion 3-3. Three, three. Um, we don't have minions with huge amounts of health. Uh, damage minion, it could spring quite a nasty surprise. Um, but as long as a minion doesn't die, or if a minion gets damaged without dying, it's not really going to be much use on an Argent Commander, for example. On our Frostwolf Warlords, that could be a nasty bit of late gameness. The Dark Iron Dwarf, 4-4-4, four, 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 2 damage for a turn. Solid core stats with a little bit of extra attack damage. Next up, then the Abusive Sergeant, which we already have as one of them. So we have the options. Okie dokie. Dark Iron Dwarf has got the pick. Thank you, an athletic yourself. I am feeling quite unathletic today, so I shall join you in that. Absolutely. Your screen name is resonating with me greatly. Heroic Strike, Jungle Panther, and then the Blood Cell Raider too. An interesting one there. So Heroic Strike we've already covered. Power up, hit things down. If I don't have a weapon, that is still going to do some damage. They're very good. Jungle Panther for 3, 4, 2 in the stealth. A nice attack. Uh, slightly lower health, and then that stealth means that it's just going to survive probably for a turn unless some area of effect damage gets dropped on the table. Blood Cell Raider, gaining attack equals to the attack of your weapon. Not actually such a bad early game draft. Reason for that being, I've got two Fury War Axes. There's a reasonable chance I'll get out one of those Fury War Axes, and then suddenly, for two mana, I have a 5 3 Blood Cell Raider rather than a 2 3 Blood Cell Raider. So, in a deck with weapons, the pirate cards are pretty good. Um, not too bad, well worth considering. So, Heroic Strike, Jungle Panther, or a Blood Cell Raider, up to you guys. While you guys make your decision, um, I am very, very tempted just to sneak, sneak over to Twitter, if you guys aren't watching, and let's just go and find the card that was announced this morning. I'm going to do a few separate... Ah, oh, it's the Anubar Ambusher. No, sorry, it was Rebirth. Elements Guide Me. By saying elements guide me, they make it sound like a shaman card. Destroy a minion, then return it to life with full health <laughs> for two mana. That looks like a shaman card to me, the shaman class card. Um, two mana, that's powerful, powerful, powerful. Heroic Strike, Blood Cell, if a spell heavy, I'd worry about Blood Cell being situational, but we already have two axes. Um, let's go for a Heroic Strike from the chat of Votage. Right, next up we've got Acolyte of Pain, Warsong Commander. Or Young Dragonhawk. Acolyte of Pain draws cards. Lovely stuff. The Warsong Commander. Whenever you summon a minion with three or less attack, give it charge. Oh, this card used to be so powerful. It got uh, slightly debuffed uh, by Blizzard because it was a little bit imbalanced. Um, welcome! 
and the young Dragonhawk, last but not least, with Wind Fury, you're dropping it first turn, you're going to be tapping away, maybe if you drop it, it survives for a turn, you can use it to break a shield, but you really want that down in the early game, it's a, it's a starting card, um, that is what there is to say about it really. Um, taking a look, what minions do we have with three or less attack? Well, we got the Abusive Sergeants, we have the Armorsmiths, none of them have really huge attack to really be doing anything with. Um, if you're in a Warlock deck, uh, Warlock? Murloc. Combine that with some Murlocs, you've got a fairly ugly deck, as well as anything that swarms in the early game. Things being able to charge hard in. What is it going to be? Um, in the interest of getting a game going, a war song. And we have a few people tuning in and Twitter as well. Okay, we're going to go for the Warsong Commander, according to you guys. Ben Creeper, Shield Block, or Storm and Champion. The Fen Creeper, a solid mid to late game tank with that taunt as well. It's going to be sitting there. And the three attack does actually give it the ability to pick off a few swarming minions. It's certainly going to be putting a bit of pressure on those guys as well. So it is a nice choice in a Particularly if you have any aggro decks playing against you, it's just going to be stopping a couple of things. Maybe a two for one. Shield block, five armor, drawing a card, makes you tougher to kill, gives you card draw. Pretty nice in most situations. And last but not least, the Stormwind Champion, buffing up everything else on the board. If you can keep a whole smorgasbord of minions down on the deck, then dropping that late game um, is going to be just giving that extra bit of damage and health that could make all the difference. Shield block has been picked, courtesy of Twitter. Next up we have the Arcanite Reaper. We've got the Amani Berserker and Silverhand Knight. So the Arcanite Reaper, uh, for the five mana, you can hit people in the face and all kinds of things. Um, a nice, solid, solid um, jam. Ooh, just a second too late on <laughs> Athletic. Um, I know that you guys have got to jump in and jump out. Some of you are in jobs and stuff, so don't worry about it. I will try my best to draw after without you. It might be worse, but there we go. Um, Arcanite Reaper, um, only the 2 durability but can do some solid damage and if re you're really in a pinch then you can maybe damage the enemy hero or attack something that's got quite high health. The Armani Berserker, the range of 3 attack, doing 1 damage to yourself in a warrior deck is generally quite common. Or having ways to damage your own minions in a warrior deck, I've got a bunch of cards that actually let you do that. Um, so that can be a 5-2, can be quite nice. And then the Silver Hand Knight, um, he's a 2 for 2 for 1 cards in Arena are pretty tasty. Just the fact that he summons a 2-2 two, two Squire, his 5 mana and 4-4 four, four is solid, and then that 2-2 two, two Squire, and then just gives you more table presence. Particularly in Arena, these cards tend to come into their own. Anything that's 2 for 1 is even stronger, just because it ramps you. And by ramping, I mean it gets you further ahead more quickly in a better position. So what is it going to be? You guys must decide. Um... Silverhand Knight has been the pick for the Katrololololololololololololololololololololololololololololololololololololololololololololololololololololololololololololololololololololololololololololololololololololololololololololololololololololololololololololololololololololololololololololololololololololololololololololololololololololololololololololololololololololololololololololololololololololololololololololololololol
see what we've got. So mana curve wise, we're still quite stacked in this two to three mana range. Um, let's just have a review of uh, minions versus spells as well. So a spell minions. So how many spells? One, two, three, four, five. Okay, five spells, two weapons. So we'll say seven sort of spells and weapons, and then remainder ten minions. Um, in the early game, we can be buffing, we can be damaging, although in both of those probably aren't going to be played turn one. The axes keep them in control. If a heroic strike can let us swing into a hero, or in a situational sense, we can pick off a minion. Slams will let us draw and control. Armor Smith, Shield Block, and Acolyte of Pain give us both armor, um, card draw, and. Yep, yeah, armor and card draw. It covers three cards in two words, or two phrases. Warsong Commander may let us charge in with some of our smaller minions. Dark Iron Dwarf is just a solid 4 for 4 with a buff. Silence, um, buffing up our side of the table, 2 for 1, and table presence, controller, la la la. Trading, and table presence and finisher. Two votes for the Mogushan. Mogushan it is. Right, we have then the Blue Girl Warrior, charging Murloc, charge again as a spell, and then the Core Hound for the late game. So Blue Girl Warrior, 2-2-1, two, two, we can charge in do that damage, probably die with that one health, but tap in with the early damage. Charge, um, give a friendly minion to attack and charge, uh, a nice little buff. Ooh, interesting, interesting. We have a, a bit of controversy in terms of people debating whether we should have taken Venture Co. There's some pressure at Draft or Tudor. And the Core Hound is just a late game finisher. A five health for seven mana, quite low, but then his uh, attack is buffed up correspondingly. So with all of that, under consideration. Um, we shall play a bit of countdown with a tick-tock clock going. I'm going to go for the late game finisher in terms of the core hound. Next up, ooh, I need your help with this. We're going to have Gorehow, a mountain giant, and a faceless manipulator for that rare epic draft. Um, we have some nice, nice choices. So Gorehowl, uh, in control warriors, or in warriors in general, you can execute with that for the seven damage. It's only got the one durability, but if I have a lot of armor, I can use Gorehowl to control pretty much most of the side of the table. Um, so powerful, powerful weapon. Mana Giant, one less for each other card in your hand. Brilliant if you've got loads of cards, not so good if you don't. The Faceless Manipulator can just let me copy anything else on the table, mine or my opponents. You guys have voted for Gorehowl. Very good choice. That was a nice fortunate draft for us. The Wind Fury Harpy, the Sengen Shield Master, or the Reckless Rocketeer. So Harpy, Wind Fury, 6 for 5, high mana, you lose a bit of attack and health for that Wind Fury of hitting twice. The Shield Master tanks it up, the Rocketeer charges in with the low health. Shield Master is your choice. Grimscale Oracle, the Spiteful Smith, and Battle Rage. Um, no need probably for an oracle guys because we don't have any other murlocs, we're not going that way. The Spiteful Smith enrages, two attack on my weapon if that gets damaged. And 4-6 can be a very awkward minion to deal with in the late game, don't underestimate that smith. And then Battle Rage, drawing a card for each damage friendly character. Spiteful you guys have picked. Spiteful we shall go. Slam, Voodoo Doctor. And then the Night Blade, so we've covered the Night Blade, Voodoo Doctor, one drop. Just another two health and then might do a bit of damage along the way. Not a bad early drop. Slam, another two damage to a minion and drawing a card. More draw power and more of that lovely control. Slams all the way. Slam flies in. Charge, Leopard Gnome and Flesh Eating Ghoul. So we've covered Charge, we've covered Leopard Gnome. The Flesh Eating Ghoul itself, whenever a minion dies, game one attack. Um, can be quite nasty in Arena because unless... People generally try and pick it off first for self-explicatory reasons. Uh, self-explicatory? Explanatory. Been a bit of a long day. Um, whenever a minion dies, gaining that one attack. So minions are dying, and remember that's your opponent's minions as well as your own. Um, suddenly this can get very, very powered up very quick. Remember it's not an enrage effect. It doesn't have to go off the health. You guys have gone for the goal. Maybe I'm being bogus and biased here. <laughs> I'm trying to sculpt you. Sculpt you in terms of making some choices. It is your choice. I should not rave on about any card too much. We've covered charge. The Thralmar wins here, a typical with a Wind Fury card. A higher mana, lower base stats, but then you get Wind Fury to make up for it. And then the Venture Co. Mercenary, which you guys are turned down last time, but maybe could be an option. Everyone agreeing on Smith and Slam. Minions costing three more. That high health could be an option. Um, uh, out of all of these three, um, no particularly obvious pick. 
you guys must pick. I could just say to you, hey, hey, pick the mercenary. Mercenary it is. <laughs> Mortal Strike. Upgrade. And Sun Fury Protector. That's an interesting three cards. Um, after this, we'll play our first game, and then we'll crack on and see how we go. You will have picked the deck, and we'll play it to get on. I must go and vote. Voting is important. So the Mortal Strike, dealing four damage, and then if I am low on health, I actually deal six. And I can do that, of course, to a minion or a hero. A nice bit of execution. Um, upgrade, if I've got a weapon, 1-1. One, one. Otherwise, I can just put a weapon straight into play with 1-3. And then the Sun Fury Protector, 2-2-3. Two, two, lower base stats. But I can give two minions taunt, and I can just create a big old solid wall. So if I've got some big health minions, the Sun Fury Protector could be very, very awkward indeed. Big welcome to you guys from Yo Heart Attack. Always great to see you guys on Twitter. And if you're watching on YouTube, if you're watching on Twitch, go and follow at Yo Heart Attack. Um, some cool, cool Hearthstone stuff. And then there's also World of Warcraft and other Blizzard stuff too across some other sites. So you should definitely go check it out. To keep the things moving in terms of minions, all oh, the temptation, right? Because I'm quite heavy, I'm tempted to go with a Mortal Strike. Mortal Strike it is. The Sun Fury Protector could have been a very ooh Protector just vote came in just a second too late. I'm now mate. I'm having choice regret. I was really tempted to go with that Protector. And the War Golem. That's the last card. So we've got Wolf Rider charging for three. The Dread Corsair. Uh, one less per attack of your weapon. Um, a pirate, of course, but um, you can drop that for free most of the time, or for one mana with most of the weapons that we have. Could be an interesting tanking choice. And the War Golem is just 777. There's nothing to say about it apart from you throw it down late game. It's big and ugly and can do some damage. So it could be a finisher in arena. <laughs> Red Corsair. Let's grab Ogamegai, Chillwind Yeti, or the Frost Wolf Warlord. Okay, Ogamegai, Magi. Spell damage 1, 4, 4, 4. Here's what it says on the tin. Chillwind Yeti, 4, 4, 5. Awkward a bit of health there. Dropped early in the game. Just a real solid core card between those three. A basic card as well, for all of you newer players out there. You do a lot worse than have Chillwind Yetis in your life. And then a Frostwolf Warlord that we've already run through. Um, but buffing things up, causing trouble. If we've got lots of minions down, he could be a, a nice similar late game finisher. Right, because we've got but three cards to go. While you guys decide on your picks, I'm just going to run through what we've got. We've got quite a waiting in the early to mid game. Note, not huge loads in the late game. We're going to be going out and attacking, being aggro from the start. So have a look at breakdown of minions versus spells. Spell, two weapons, so three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Nine spells, um, meaning that we then have, if I do the math, 18 minions. Frostwolf. Cool stuff. Uh, two more cards to go. Draggling Mechanic, Ancient Brew Master, and the Silver Moon Guardian. Okay, we've not had any of these three. Draggling Mechanic is a twofer. Um, two for one, two attack, four health. Just awkward, really. Um, takes a couple of taps to go, and it will probably help you trade two for one. And it gives you two cards on the table for one as well. Not too bad. Ancient Brew Master, four, five, four. So solid, solid, solid in terms of stats. Really core stats heavy. But then you can return your friendly minion again, like all of these pandas. The Panda runs and all of the Brewmaster cards. So if you've got a really damaged card, we can pick that up. If we want to try and battle cross something again, we can pick that up. Let's us do a bit of table flexibility. Last but not least, the Silver Moon Guardian. So let's let me just type these in. Choices, choices, decisions. The mechanic for board control has been voted for. Silver Moon Guardian is really just a shielded card. Right. We need to get this game in. So last card to go. Oh, Mana Addict and the Armor Smith to finish off. That's our final rare. And the Alarmo Bot I just find hilarious. <laughs> I mean, look, if you've got loads of expensive cards, then Alarmo Bots, you throw them down. People generally tend to, as they should, focus them off the table right away. But oh, if you keep it down. I think there was a you know, Ragnaros, and it was just the funniest thing in the world. <laughs> Ragnaros turn four. <laughs> My opponent cried a little that day. 
I would cry if someone did that to me. Um, Mana Addict, don't really have loads of spells. Not much to say about that. You guys have gone with Armor Smith. Done! Okay, that is our, our arena deck. Now I'm going to, I can't quite screenshot all of that. So what we'll do is just uh, do a quick review of what you guys have picked and what kind of way we're actually going to try and play this. Um, so you guys have gone for a deck which is pretty heavy in the early to mid game which is quite kind of fair I mean in most arenas it's good to have stuff that you can play in the early game because you generally tend to have you know you'll be doing well if you survive to the late game or really long late games in most arenas that I found anyway so lots of early game options pretty good um, is this a rush not really if we take a look lots at two mana lots at four and five um, early in the game we do have whirlwind and abusive sergeant both of these cards we are more likely to drop ironically not on turn one they're probably going to be more to combo with other stuff in the mid game two furry warwicks happy to drop those of course we can armor up don't forget with our hero ability um, that will let us do some damage we can pick off minions there's all kinds of interesting stuff we can do there so good to have the weapons heroic strike whether we hit a opposing hero in the face or we reach out to try and buff up a weapon we have attack something with our hero pick off a particularly nasty minion that's got flexibility and utility so it will, not a bad choice three slams of course do remember in arena you can have more than the two of each card that you can actually pick in a constructed deck so you get some interesting deck choices we are going to be slamming all over the shop and drawing cards while we do so so control and card draw lovely two armor smiths as well very very nice um the armor smith of course, whenever a friendly minion takes damage, we gain one armor. We can attack our own minions with Whirlwind and armor up to the gunnels. So that will help us stack armor and attack with our hero too. Shield block, five armor, draw a card. Nothing bad about that. A great choice. See it in constructed decks for the ladder. A very, very solid choice in arena. One Acolyte of Pain. Do some damage to it. Get some cards drawn. The Ghoul if any of our other minions are dying. And you can see a nice synergy here. Armorsmith, if our minions take damage, we get positive effects. Acolyte, if that takes damage, we get positive effects. The Ghoul, if any of our any minion on the table takes damage, um, we get, well, if any minion dies, we get a positive effect. So that's all comboing nicely. The Warsong Commander is a bit of a dark horse. And we do have a lot of early game cards that can charge in, so we can do some quick attacking. Immortal Strike, that's probably going to be a late game finisher. Or we can use it for control as well. Dark Iron Dwarf, solid minion with a one turn buff. Draggling mechanic is table controlled as a twofer. The Dread Corsair is a nice tank that will probably be free because we've got some decent weapon options. Mog Shrine Wargen and Senjin are both mid game tanks which are solid to slow the opponent down. Spellbreaker will give us situational uh, removal of any horrible op opposing threats. Um, two Frostwolf Warlords um, will give us a great option for finishing in the late game or mid to late game. Silver Hand Light is 2 4 and Table Control. Spiteful Smith and Venture Co Mercenary as a finisher. We also have Gorehound for swinging away in the late game. That could be an execute for 7 or removing minions. Gorehound is a late game finisher and Storming Champion buffing all of our other minions. So, how are we going to play this deck? We're going to want to get a lot of our cheap minions down in the early game. We're we'll trying to attack, do damage. We don't mind taking some damage to our minions because there are lots of positive effects we can trigger there. But we generally want to keep control with our minions in the early game, get those positive effects, use our slam and spells to keep the table under control, and hopefully have table control, have lots of minions on the table, then in the late game we can compound that with Silver Hand Knight, we can continue trading and keeping the table under control with things like Gorehow, and then we have big late game finishes, probably in our Frostwolf Warlord and Stormwind Champion. So let us play, and welcome, it is great to see you, Felix. play so the second part of our choose your own arena you have picked the deck um we are now going to play it let's see how your deck goes we have reiki reiki 47 okay so our goal of course was to keep control in the early game do some damage and then ooh, okay and make sure that we keep table control have lots of minions down and then in the late game um dominate with what we have left um i could keep this mogu shan warden i'm actually going to try and trade away those two fours and see if i can get some more early game options that's not too bad i'm quite happy with that gore howl okay expensive late game but because i'm going second remember that i can accelerate things with the coin and a greetings to you my friend as well so in terms of nothing nothing on turn one that we can drop
Hunter, of course, swarming one into us, and let's see what we can do. Turn two, okay, well, um, I could drop an axe and start swinging away. I'm actually just going to throw in the armor smith. Um, he may try and decide to charge and get that down, but having the armor smith down early will let me power up with some... Oh, deadly shot. Okay, at least I made him waste a deadly shot. <laughs> Remember that destroying a minion doesn't do damage, and therefore it does not trigger the effect of armor smith, which is a little bit frustrating. Um, we will drop a flesh-eating ghoul, and if he's going to keep trading these away... Um, then he will be keeping me under control, of course, but on the flip side, he will be removing his removal options. There we go, kill command. All of these, as long as he's a hunter, he's not rushing me, he's not doing damage to my hero, although I'm losing some attacking options, um, I will be reasonably okay with that. Uh, no point dropping the smith, I'm not going to power into anything with the coin. The Warsong Commander may just get traded away, um, so if I get another cheap minion, ooh, that's quite painful. There is the Venture Co. Mercenary and all of its painful nastiness. Is there a way I can remove that? Um, there is not. So that is showing how nasty the Venture Co. Mercenary can be. So I don't have a weapon. Ooh, I can, if I enrage, then my weapon will get to attack. Um, I can pick him off next turn, if I so decide. The Spellbreaker is not going to reduce his damage anymore. So what I'm probably going to do is throw down the Spiteful Smith. And just tap for some damage. So next turn, if I want to take the damage on my hero, I can just coin into Gorhal and get that off the table. Um, although that will take a lot of damage on me. Ooh, secret that we need to play around. He's just gone straight up for the kill. With the five health left over, it means that um, I can certainly reach out and look for an execute option. So what can we do? Right, the Fury War Axe, I can Whirlwind, I can give my weapon to attack. So here's a nice little combo. I am going to take the damage on my hero, which is not ideal, but I would rather keep the table under control if possible. So let us armor up to start with. Uh, let's just check the five options. I think armoring is the rightful decision here. Um, we can... Thinking about coining into something, I'm going to coin into... I know that's a misplay because I need to play my whirlwind. Sorry guys, I'm now in a bit of a rush. That <laughs> unathletic was exactly what I was looking to do. Now I'm going to take the risk. Interesting. So that's probably going to be a snipe. You may note that it wasn't a freezing trap. It did not return it to my hand. It's not an explosive trap. It did not blow up and do two damage. So therefore it probably means that the next card that I play will lose uh, four health. could also be a snake trap as well, of course, but it's not a misdirect either. So what options do we have? I'm not too nice. I need to remove that beasts have charged. That's quite nasty. Um, what are the options? I can charge straight in with none of those cards, which is a bit annoying. The other minions having 1-1. One, one. I need some table presence, ideally. There's no way that I can be destroying that in one go, which is frustrating. Um, or oh, wait, there is. Your magic shall not save. Order played. I'm losing that, which is annoying. But oh. misplays all over the shop. Misplays over oh, the misplays. I'm probably not doing your deck the justice it deserves. But welcome to one of you guys training in. Average UK game. Good to see you. We can see our hunter friend here keeping us viciously, viciously under control. And that I do want to try and get off the table. Okay, what options do we have? Well, Gorhal, my health is oh so low. And with that gladiator's longbow, I could actually be in a nasty execute position. Um, giving a minion to attack this turn is not going to help me out. Um, I'm not going to be able to remove this off the table in one. Uh, but he's going to be able to hit me in the face. I need to take that just to stop any beasts from charging. But what we really need is some... Misplays are how most of how I play this game. Oh, five health. The pain. The pain and anger. Right, what have we got? Well, as soon as I kill this, it's going to do two damage to me. Not so good. Um, <laughs> I'm going to need to armor up regardless. A heroic strike to remove this will then um, at least sort of keep me in the fight. So that's 
Oh, actually, no, hang on. I do not need to do that. I can. Oh, I'm gonna have to take the damage. It's not good. Um, I'll just want to remove this in my own, but I'm down to three. So I'm pretty sure this could be GG's. I do apologise if you're new and you've just tuned in. I'm not going to say I'm perfect, but this is probably a below average game. <laughs> oh, unleash the hounds. That gives him three to finish the game. So what happened there? Well, there were some misplays, but we did not manage to get the table quite under control in the early game as much as we would have liked. So drawing a little bit of a pain there, but I think that I could certainly have played that a bunch better. So I'm going to go and look over that and see how things go. Um, so it's been a bit of a half stay now. Um, really, guys, thank you so much for tuning in. I'm sorry that I've been quite irregularly streaming as of late. Last week I had a lot of bits to get sorted, needed some time off. Um, and this week, just been a bit busy with work and similar. Um, also, my birthday, had a lovely night out yesterday with my wiser half, so I need a little bit of time off as well. But we are going to be streaming all the way up until E3, and then um, that exciting week is going to be absolutely amazing. So, thanks for tuning as always. That was Pick Your Own Arena. Now, we will, of course, continue to play this, so I will tweet, even if I'm not streaming this, I will tweet when we are playing that deck, so you can see hopefully it play a little bit better than I just played it now. Um, but that's the Hearthstone half half of tonight. Uh, as a quick wrap up, if you are new, where can you find us? YouTube.com forward slash Valcraftcast, all of our archived videos. 58 other episodes of the Hearthstone Half Hour. Mondays, we do new player Mondays and deck breakdowns. We did a Miracle Rogue this week. Go check that out. Um, trying to explain new decks and learn them ourselves for new to intermediate players, and that includes myself. Tuesdays, I generally pick your own arena like we've just done. You, the chat, and Twitter, at one Twitch and live, pick a deck and pick all the cards, and then we try and play it. Wednesday, we do Ladder. Uh, with a few days left at the end of the season, I may see if I can Legend. Um, Thursday, we then tend to look for more intermediate to advanced concepts. We do Tactics Thursday, where we just charge through more advanced concepts of card games, things that I've tried in previous card games that I've played, and we see how they apply to Hearthstone. And then Fridays, if we are streaming, we either play an entirely different game or just play something entirely fun, do some uh, playing battles against people on the stream, do free-to-play, and similar. Um, last but not least... Twitter.com for slash Falcraftcasts. Drop us a tweet if we're not gaming or streaming. We'll be able to get a hang of us there. Love to chat to you. And then Falcraft.org is the website. You can see all of our videos framed um, with also resources that maps don't live quite so well on um, a video. So things like deck lists, links, and similar. A big shout out to everyone Daliosaurus, Felix, Tomodachi, and Athletic, and Wolfie, and all of you other guys who have joined us. Uh, do go check out Yo Hearth Attack, and then all of those guys on Twitter as well. Some great YouTube going on too, and some cool websites and blogs you should also check out. Um, thanks very much for tuning in, guys. Might be back later, but if not, it's been great having you.